so welcome to again session so let us see the continuous this uh, topic group 13 elements reasoning based questions so in this in this session we will see some more as questions why is ammonia stable in air and water so let us see this one. first of aluminum at ordinary temperature it forms a protective layer of al2o3 so on the surface of the aluminum it is uh, uh, one particular layer is al2o3 which protect it from air and water that's why aluminum is stable in air and water uh, explain why aluminum though are electropositive metal and finds extensive used as a structural material so here we can see it is cheap and light metal with high tensile strength and it has a tendency to form alloys with several other metals like copper, magnesium, manganese, zinc, etc. And it does not corrode easily. So that's why we can say it is a, has an extensive use as a structural material. Why is aluminium used in making electrical cables despite its low conductivity as compared to copper? Actually, it is available cheaply. However, since it has lesser conductive nature than copper, copper so thicker aluminium wires are used so these are the reasons to for uh, use of aluminium in making electric cable despite its low conductivity as compared to copper dura aluminium is used in aircraft industries so what is the reason dura aluminium is a alloy of aluminium copper magnesium and magnesium it is light strong and durable and hence is very much used in aircraft industry no visible reaction occurs when aluminium is left in contact with concentrated nitric acid so when you leave with concentrated nitric acid there is no visual reaction actually aluminium is passive due to the coating of Al2O3 so this is helping preventing the reaction with the concentrated HNO3 so when it comes in contact with the this acid and it becomes inert for further action why because again we can say this aluminium sulfur get oxidized and this is preventing this for further action. initially reaction will take place but again when this oxygen will form then there is no there is a passive reaction with concentrated HNO3. No reaction will occur at all. Explain why a homeowner should avoid attaching aluminium down spouts to galvanized steel gutters. Because this aluminium again they have protective steel by cathodic protection, it protects it more susceptible to oxidation. So this is the features which uh, this is uh, how homeowners uh, should avoid attaching aluminium down spouts, spouts, uh, down spouts to galvanized steel cutters. Why does anhydrous AlCl3 fumes in air? So actually, it reacts with the air contains this moisture. So this is moisture on reaction with the moisture. It will gives fumes like a HCl. HCl is a white fumes and aluminium hydroxide. So this fume is visible in, in the air. That's why anhydrous AlC3 fumes in air. Because solution of AlC3 behaves HD towards the litmus while that of NaCl does not. Why? So we can see. Actually this uh, salt, this AlC3 is a salt of uh, weak base and strong acid. And so is the hydrolysis of aluminium ions. That's why it is HD in nature. We can see how it is acidic, reacting, giving acid. On the other hand, NaCl is a sort of strong acid and strong base, and it does not undergo hydrolysis like this. So NaCl will not go under hydrolysis, and AlCl3 will go under hydrolysis, and forming a weak base and a strong acid. Due to strong acid, it is acidic. Change in coordination number when crystalline AlCl3 is heated. So your coordination number also changes. So let us see this one. So actually in this case what we think, AlCl3 crystallizes in an essentially ionic lattice and which contains six coordinate metal ions. But it dissolves in non-polar solvent also. This is a crystalline AlCl3 on heating, it becomes a gaseous AlCl3. And coordination number is 6, you can see here. This is the AlCl3, you can see here 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 6 Cl is there. Coordination number 4, 1 Cl is attached with the 4 chlorine. On heating it becomes coordination number 3, 3 Cl because in gaseous state. In water, AlCl3 is hydrated as a this form. This form. So this is the coordination number six. In, it is in ionic form. Miss six, water is attached with the chlorine. So this Al2, it will be your six. So Al2 Cl6, this one coordination number four, reacting with the water, it is giving AlCl3 six molecule water. And due to this one, what they are forming the coordination number six. So that's why it contains six coordinate metal ions. Hydroxide insoluble in excess ammonium hydroxide but dissolved in sodium hydroxide. 
if your sodium hydroxide is a strong alkali and ammonia aluminium hydroxide is a m43 it dissolves in sodium hydroxide and forms sodium soluble sodium meta aluminate so this is soluble this sodium meta is actually soluble but uh, ammonium hydroxide insoluble in in the ammonium hydroxide so reaction will take place with uh, with sodium hydroxide and aluminium hydroxide and that's why it is soluble alum used for setting muddy water actually alum act as a strong coagulating agent for the suspended negative charge in beauty like dust and dirt and these particles in colloidal states so alum will collect all these particles being a positives and they coagulate and they become heavy on heavier they will settle as a they settle all muddy muds down the bottom by sedimentation process when sodium carbonate is heated added to a solution of aluminum salt so aloh3 is a precipitated so why it is precipitated so because aluminum carbonate and aluminum hydroxide is formed which are insoluble in water so these are insoluble in water so they are all there uh, emerge as a precipitate thermite reaction cannot be stopped by water like ordinary fire so in thermite reaction water is useless to stop the fire why so we can see here uh, ordinary water it needs the burning of material in atmospheric oxygen water cools the burning material but also keeps the oxygen away from covering material but in thermite reaction oxygen is also evolved but it won't do this thing this phenomena it evolves in metal oxide and used during combination as well as high temperature produce during this it gives rise to decomposition of h2o by aluminum to h2o2 let us see this reaction the thermite takes an aluminum reacting with the cr2o3 so it is giving here is, uh, cr liquid state al2o3 and heat in large quantity this heat will again react with the water it will decompose the water into h2 plus o2 and aluminum will be converted into al plus o3 and h2 plus o2 so this is the aluminum metals frequently used as a reducing agent for the extraction of metals such as chromium manganese iron why so we can see this one Aluminium has a great affinity for oxygen, and thus it reduces a large number of less electropositive metal oxides to metals. Like we can see here, aluminium is reacting with Fe2O3, so we are getting a large amount of heat. Similarly, here also it is producing large amount of heat at a particular temperature. That's why it is used as a frequently as a reducing agent. B2Sc react with the ammonia to form different products. So this is reacted with ammonia to form different products. So let us see. Actually, B two S is has a different type of reaction with the ammonia. So if you take the ammonia in excess quantities at low temperature, it convert into this adduct B two S six and two N S three. Or we can write this B two S six in this form like uh, N S three twice and B H four as a negative and B H two. This is your anion. This is your cation. So like this is the form. Now, if you take the ammonium excess quantity instead of low temperature, here is low temperature you are getting a duct, but if you take high temperature, it becomes boronitride. So, in case of excess ammonia and high temperature, it becomes boronitride. Now, if you take the B two S six with ammonia at normal temperature, like one fifty Kelvin, four fifty Kelvin. So, in these cases, what will happen? So it will convert into a structure that is called as the borazol. So borazol is a cyclic structure. B three and three S C. You can see I have drawn the structure here. So this is cyclic structure. Borazol. This is the boron and this is the nitrogen. Nitrogen has lone pair. This lone pair can delocalize. Delocalize means it can form a double bond structure. So this becomes positive. This becomes negative. So this is called as a borazol. Both are structures similar to each other or resonance to each other. We can compare this borazol structure with the benzene structure, but here charges are developed, so these pi electrons are partially delocalized. But here pi electrons are completely delocalized, so there is difference between the borazol and the benzene. What are the other speciality of the borazol? So they are the colorless liquids. Melting point is minus fifteen seven degree, fifty seven degree centigrade, very low temperature, and they are the light sensitive. So they are stored in the dark room. Otherwise, in the light, it can explode. It can cause burst. Both boron and nitrogen is sp2 hybridized, so this is sp2 hybridization, and they are isoelectron, isoelectronic and isoteric to benzene. So this is the speciality of the, of the borazol structures. So that's all.